Hello friends, it's Kanan, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my tattoos. That's right, it's another episode of Tattoos Day. Um, before I get started, just don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you like anything tattoos, piercings. I actually uh, just got a tattoo apprenticeship, so hopefully that all works out. I haven't started yet, but... Uh, I'm going to be learning a lot more about tattoos and not just from a getting them perspective. But anyway, if you're interested in anything that go alongs with that, go alongs with that. Just like this video and subscribe to see more videos from me. And don't forget to comment down below any questions you guys have. I could go on and on, but let's get started into my tattoos. Now, unfortunately, I don't have many. As you can see, I don't have any on my arms or anything. Obviously not on my face or neck or whatever. Uh, no tattoos on my back. I guess I could just tell you where I do have my tattoos instead of where I don't have them because that would be easier. Uh, this is not a good start. Anyway, let's get started. My first tattoo. I believe my first tattoo was in 2017. I th I'm pretty sure I got the year right because I know I have emails from my next tattoo and I think I got my first tattoo the year prior. So my first tattoo is right here on the screen. Um, now, as you can see, it says hope with a blue underline for the H-O. Uh, yes, I underlined ho on purpose. I don't know. I just thought it would be funny to have the ho underlined. But um, I don't know. I'm just weird. Okay. I'm just weird. For this tattoo, it was pretty meaningful to me compared to like my other tattoos, just because um, ever since I was younger, like in high school, going through depression and stuff, like always what I said was like, just hope things will get better and stuff like that. Yada, yada, yada. Basically, I always wanted hope with me. And that's the idea. That's the concept. Ever since I was a teenager, I always wanted to get hope tattooed on me somewhere a lot. Like I played around with it right here. I played around with shaving the back of my head and having like hope tattooed on the back of my head. Um... But I wasn't really sure if I wanted to see it. I didn't want it just a simple like, like hope on my wrist. I, I've always liked tattoos, but I never really knew if I wanted to go all in on tattoos. You know what I mean? Because I knew I probably wouldn't be able to stop. And I just wasn't sure how I felt about tattoos yet. So when I went to the Philly Tattoo Convention for the first time, I was actually pretty excited. Like I didn't have any plans to get a tattoo, but I did like kind of have that in the back of my mind. Obviously I brought some cash with me. So that way if I did decide to get one, I would do it. Now I went with my best friend to the Philly Tattoo Convention and she actually found someone to do a tattoo for her and that's how I actually got the courage to just be like, oh, I'll get a tattoo too. Can you do me too? Uh, and basically he asked me to choose a font. Like he just told me to go to a website, find a font that I liked. I found this one that was in cursive, really nice. I always wanted the word to be in cursive. And I don't know. It's a lot different than any of my other tattoos. I'm a lot more of a bigger tattoo kind of person. I'm a lot more of a don't get word tattoo type of person. Get imagery, get artwork that represents what you want it to represent. That was this tattoo and honestly like it didn't hurt at all. I was really anxious like at the tattoo convention. I really wasn't expecting to get a tattoo. It only took like 10 minutes but the whole time I was like laughing because it was a mixture of anxiety and it tickled really bad. It's right here like under my bra strap like on the side of my body on my ribs. So it wasn't that painful but it was just line work and it was only 10 minutes. So the next tattoo I wanted to get. Um, I didn't really know how to get tattooed. I didn't know how to find a tattoo artist. Obviously too nervous to just walk into a tattoo shop near me. Like I got all the anxiety. I'm so messed up. But anyway, so I was like, maybe I'll just go to the Philly tattoo convention again. So what had happened was I was like, let's see if I can find an artist that I like. And I found an artist and I emailed them. Unfortunately, they didn't have any openings for the tattoo convention. But that's how I opened myself up to booking outside of the tattoo convention. So this time it was 2018 and this was my first big tattoo. Now here's a picture of it. It was multiple sessions. 
it was I believe two nine hour sessions for this tattoo so it was a big leap from my 10 minute tattoo it's on my upper right thigh and I really it took a long time to finish this tattoo it was a really long process it really didn't hurt that bad I do remember going up towards the like crotch area of like my upper almost towards my inner thigh it's not touching my inner thigh at all but like getting close towards the inside that part literally felt like he was tattooing my goodies it hurt so bad I remember that part in particular hurting really bad and also going up to the side on on the right like the very side like the top of my leg where he started didn't hurt that bad but the top side kind of hurt a lot um but the inside the top inside hurt the most um so i'll show you the after the first session it was just an outline like kind of just the outlines and all the dark areas of these roses and i think he i think he mostly just did the outlines of the bees i'll have a picture here um so actually like when it, when it was just that stage it was so like it didn't look bad obviously i know tattoos are a process especially when you're getting really big tattoos but it was really ugly and of course I had to wait for the next session which was only like four or five months later I'm not really sure but when I finally got it done it turned out beautiful and I loved it I really loved this artist for um, their use of the geometric shapes and their realism type of ideas and I didn't want realistic bees I wanted it to be more cartoony because I didn't want like a scary real bug on my leg <laughs> But I do like tattoos. And actually, I guess this tattoo has a little bit more of a meaning. I could apply a meaning to anything. Um, in general, I would say most of my tattoos are kind of meaningless. Just things I like. Things that remind me of like little things about my life. But so, uh, if these were to mean anything, my favorite color is blue. Um, uh, I guess the three B's could be me and my two sisters. And then the roses could be both of my parents. Like five people in my family. I don't know there's not really much to it and then the hexagons just kind of go with the bees I don't know and I didn't really want them to be honeycombs but bees hexagons I don't know the whole thing just wrapped together really awesome and I really love this artist's work so that's why I have one two three four tattoos by this artist and I don't know if I said I only have eight tattoos total so that says a lot then the next one I got I believe it was the end of 2018 when I emailed about another tattoo I wanted but I didn't get this one until the beginning of January I think 2019 so for the first part of the tattoo basically the concept of this tattoo was Michelangelo's Michelangelo's David's hand you can probably see um and then daffodils because daffodils are my favorite flower reminds me of when i was a kid and my dad helped me build a hat for easter um, but it was a 3d hat obviously hats are 3d um and we made daffodils out of pipe cleaner so ever since then daffodils have been my favorite flower because i have no reason to like any other flower pretty much besides they're pretty i don't know so that's why i wanted daffodils and i just wanted a hand because i'm an artist and the first painting i ever did in acrylic Obviously not as a kid, obviously we all paint as kids, but my first like painting, like acrylic painting was of Michelangelo's David's hand. Um, it was a little bit of a different picture than this, which I wanted the picture that I actually painted, but he said for a tattoo it wouldn't work as well because I think, I'm not sure the actual reasoning, obviously like hopefully I'll learn as I'm being an apprentice I'll learn why some pictures work better for tattoos than others but my guess is it was too stark of a contrast there wasn't that much range in the shades there was a lot more contrast in the photo so it was really black on one part of the hand and really bright on other parts of the hand and not much opportunity for like depth to show beyond that I don't know whatever so I wanted that and I wanted it to tie in with my first tattoo so I got a couple more hexagons to tie it in and then basically I don't know and then I love the black work daffodils that's the other thing uh, he added black work for my rose tattoo so I also love the black work of the daffodil black work that he added in there and first what was done was 
the gray triangle and the hand I believe was the first part done and then the black work all the like blacks and grays I believe were done at first and then obviously it's a big tattoo this tattoo also took two sessions so there's the picture of the first session I'm sure it's already been up but yeah I just got the gray and the black work done um and then on my second session, uh, I actually got it finished at the Philly Tattoo Convention. So I think I've actually been tattooed at every tattoo convention since the first one I went to. No, I skipped, wait. No, I've been to 2018, but I don't think I got tattooed at the 2018 convention because I had inquired too late. It wasn't until 2019's tattoo convention that I got tattooed again. He finished the color. It was a Sunday so it was the shorter day unfortunately so it was kind of a rush to finish it but he finished the color. He fixed up a little bit of the shading. Sometimes the first pass doesn't get it all so he cleaned up everything and added in this orange outline and the orange hexagons. They weren't initially in the design but he sort of like placed it on strategically to kind of fit with the composition of my whole leg. This one, I'm not, I honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite tattoo, but I would say in concept, I think this one with the hand is probably my favorite just because, I don't know, I like hands. It's a lot more sentimental than my other ones, which are just like maybe vaguely sentimental or like not sentimental at all. Both of those sessions for this one was also like nine to 10 hours. So it wasn't too bad, but whatever. Um, so I wasn't planning on getting tattooed again cause I was trying to save my money so I could maybe quit my job eventually. In 2019, I quit my job at the grocery store, but I just couldn't help myself when I saw that this tattoo artist that I've been getting tattooed by um, was doing a collab with another artist that I was a big fan of on Instagram. When they posted their collab, I was like, oh my gosh, I need this. <laughs> I love both of your artwork, so I needed it. So basically, I thought of a concept that went well for both of them, that would mish them together really well, and that's how I got my Zeus and Baby Hercules tattoo. Uh, basically, I described Baby Hercules being and then Zeus looking over them. So that's how I got this tattoo here. Now at first, just like the other ones, actually the hand tattoo wasn't too bad because the hand was done in the first pass and it was just like a gap for the flowers. But like the roses, how they had those blobs of darkness, um, this one was just as bad. So the girl tattoo artist, you might know her from um, MTV Tattoo Far. She's uh, Courtney Raimondi, Blood of Wolves. And that's the only reason and that's the only reason I'm saying her name because she's like a celebrity so, sort of like compared to any of the other tattoo artists I've gone to she's actually like on a tv show but anyway so she did that part and I was actually getting tattooed by two people at the same time for a lot of it but she it must be hard to tattoo when someone else is tattooing skin like five inches away so a lot of that time for my first session um, she was just like, I got to get this done. She didn't want to be at the studio too late because she obviously in Manhattan, she didn't want to take the, tr take the subway like in the middle of the night. So I can understand. So she wanted to finish up by 10. So she kind of had kicked him off for part of the tattoo, which fair, I don't, no big deal. Um, so she was able to finish like her main section of the baby Hercules and Pegasus, which Aesthetically and what I can visually see like what I see on a daily basis this Pegasus tattoo Like Hercules is cute too, but the Pegasus is so cute I really love how she used the blue shading to make Pegasus look freaking white Obviously, it's a little bit easy because I'm pretty pale but the shading most of the time this Pegasus looks whiter than the skin tone around the tattoo. So I think that's really cool and I really love how that part turned out. So for the first session, I believe this was like a 10 hour session. Um, she finished up first and then he was just working on as much as he could that day. But like I said, she had kicked him off for part of the day so she could like finish before she had to go home that day. And then he just did as much as he could before, you know, we all decided to call it a night and I had to book again. But this one, just like the rose, like I was saying, 
Oh my god, when that was, this one was worse than the rose though. It looked so ugly. I'm like, what if I never get to finish it? For no reason, because I was able to finish it, but it looked so, I, I'm sure I have a picture somewhere. It looked so stupid, like the face looked so like blobby and like it was just like the dark muddy colors that was there. It wasn't even like the cute colors of Zeus, which I'm not sure if Zeus even has any cute colors in the finished product. But going in for the second session it was just Zeus that time and the tattoo artist was able to finish it. This session was also a 10 hour session I believe but it wasn't too bad and it's finished and I really love how it turned out. I like how there's hexagons in this one just like my other leg has some hexagons and I just love the geometric -ness. and I love how this tattoo because I was feeling nervous because I wanted cartoony stuff but I'm like, how do I go to realistic to just cartoony type stuff? But I feel like this tattoo was the perfect segue for me to have kind of a cartoony feel with also the realistic feel merging together with the two artists merging together. And that just opens all my, all my horizons to pretty much whatever tattoos I want on my leg. Basically, my idea is any tattoo that I like is going to represent me in some way, one way or another. And if it represents me, then it'll fit with my tattoo aesthetic. That's my idea. Let me know what you think about that. You know, everyone has different ideas about tattoos and that's okay. So after the first session of the Zeus and Baby Hercules tattoo, that's when I got my Mojo Jojo tattoo at the Philly Tattoo Convention in 2020. And this one, you know, there was really nothing to it. I just, when I was younger, I liked the Powerpuff Girls. And Mojo Jojo was always like, I like monkeys, I like Mojo Jojo, and like in my family, we always want like Mojo Jojo. <laughs> I don't know. We always, like Mojo Jojo's funny. Like he's the most entertaining character. I don't know. So I just wanted Mojo Jojo. I said I wanted him to be cute and in a heart. So he, that's why he doesn't look so angry. He just looks cute. And this tattoo I got done at the Philly Tattoo Convention, like I said, by the same artist. Um, Courtney, the same artist who did Baby Hercules. So basically Mojo Jojo and Hercules are like right next to each other on my opposite thighs and then that way I could start like more cartoony, more basic styles on my right leg too. Um, and it just sort of like spills over and I don't know, I have a lot more plans for my legs but I don't really have much money right now so I don't, I can't do anything right now. <laughs> Sorry about that, I was just rambling on and on about getting Kanona and thinking I got Kanona but pretty much Mojo Jojo only took about two and a half hours and it didn't hurt that bad at all like it, this was one of my most painless tattoos I've ever gotten and basically a month after that is when I got Zeus refinished or finished not refinished and then um then we go into my next tattoo I got which is coming up right now so I was just like, I really, really want um, a blue jay on the back of my knee really bad. Because when I was getting uh, my hand tattoo and then I was getting those hexagons at, at the back of my knee, those orange hexagons, I'll show a picture here. Um, when he was tattooing that, it hurt. Like, it doesn't feel good to get tattooed on the back of your knee. But he was just like, I bet you never want to get the back of your knee tattooed. It wasn't like super condescending. It was like... It was more like a joking along with me, just in case it was portrayed a different way. But he was like, I bet you don't ever want to get the back of your knee tattooed. And I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. next, next tattoo, please. I need a blue jay there. That... <laughs> and like, ever since he said that, I'm like, I really want a blue jay going down the back of my knee. When October rolled around of last year in 2020, I was like, you know what? Like, I really want to get this tattoo. I have some gift certificates from a tattoo shop near me. And so I was looking around some tattoo artists that work there. And I saw one do a really good job with, I think, a cardinal it was. And I really loved the style. And I was like, I want her to do my tattoo. So I got her to do it. I just asked for a blue jay with some oranges. And I sent her a picture of the spot and I was like, I want the hexagons to be on top. So that's why it's sort of layered like that. The Blue Jay tattoo behind the knee only took five hours. I actually had work later in the day. If anyone works at the post office, 
you know, it is a little brutal. It is pretty tough. I had work later that day and oh my gosh, working was worse than the actual tattoo because the tattoo, like it did feel like someone was like cutting me with a knife right at the crease. The crease was the worst part. If you want a tattoo, if you want a tattoo, if you want another Tattoos Day video where I talk about getting a tattoo behind the knee, like put your questions down below, anything you want to know from me, just comment down below. But anyway, that really hurt right behind the knee, right at the crease was horrible. But overall, like the overall tattoo in total was probably one of the least painful tattoos I've gotten. I feel like such a jerk saying that. It hurt. Right behind the knee really hurt. But I think because it was only five hours, it was like, it was nothing. The tattoo artist was really nice. We talked the whole time, so we were just like talking back and forth. When you have someone to talk to during a tattoo, it makes it extremely easy to get through it because you can distract yourself. At least that's how it works for me. Um, it's super easy to distract myself when I'm thinking of conversations, especially because I'm not that good at talking. <laughs> Regardless, so that tattoo in general wasn't that bad, but it was working after. That really sucked. But I got through it and it healed pretty fine, especially considering it was a pretty rough heal because I was working in like at the post office in, I think, it, I don't know if I got tattooed in October or September, but in, at the post office generally, like when you're working like 10 hour shifts, it gets sweaty and I was sweating in the back of my knees and it was, it just sucked. It didn't feel that good. Um, healing was kind of hard for that one, but it healed pretty well, all things considered. I only had to do a little touch up on a couple of spots, and I love it. After that, the next tattoo I got was the skull tattoo, the skull with the flames. If you want to know a little bit more about that, I got a whole video. Oh, I can link it. I got a whole video. I can link it up here, and you can check it out. It's a little bit long-winded and I have like the biggest forehead in the world because I slicked my hair back a lot <laughs> bigger than it looks right now because I really like tried smoothing it down but I don't know if that was a look let me know what you think comment down below on that video too but if you want to know a lot more about that video that's the only video I think I have about a specific tattoo that I got um, just because I was filming it was my most recent tattoo when I started doing my channel but then it kind of tanked, so that's why it discouraged me from doing any more tattoo videos. I'm sure this video will tank too. Who knows? Tattoo tours might be successful though. Anyway. So that was my next one. Basically, the artist put on his Instagram story a design, and I was like, that's cool. So I booked it, and I got this at the beginning of this year, 2021. Um, I think I got it the 4th or the 5th of this year. And basically, this one was my most painful tattoo even worse than behind the knee. This one almost is behind the knee. It's like really close up to behind the knee, almost by the crease, maybe like a centimeter away from the crease of my knee. So it's like, it gets up to the more painful spots. And that was towards the end of the tattoo. And um, if you saw that video, you know that tattoo took 12 hours. And that's why it was so painful. Cause you know, after, four hours you start feeling the pain and it's unpleasant um i'm used to more like nine hour tattoos which still suck pretty bad at the end of the day to push through and do an extra three hours past like your regular like cap which i never tapped out it's always been like the tattoo artist is like i think we're not going to finish this today anyway so let's wrap this up now but yeah so that one was pretty painful just because of it all being done in one day in 12 hours luckily I didn't have to go back to get it like finished or anything like that I would like a touch up on it just because when you do a big tattoo especially a realistic tattoo in one pass sometimes things can fall out this one really heal it was a kind of a rough heal for me so um, I don't know I feel like it could use a touch up I think it looks pretty cool I got a compliment on it when I went to the beach a couple weeks ago so that's good <sighs> It is one of my more visible tattoos because if I wear shorts, you can't see most of my other tattoos. Well, I guess you can only not see most of two of my tattoos. <laughs> anyway, so I got a compliment on that from someone who was walking behind me. And that was really cool to have a compliment. I really love the flames on that one. 
Um, and that one has literally no meaning. Same thing with, oh, I didn't give meanings for any of these. Hercules and Zeus, like Zeus has no meaning to me at all. Just fit in with Hercules. Hercules was one of my favorite Disney movies. You know, I would say maybe Toy Story is my favorite. My favorite princess is Cinderella. I don't know. And then Hercules was like, you know, Hercules is the dream boat. You know what I mean? Like, I love Hercules. Love him. But I just thought it would be cute to have little baby Hercules. Um, Mojo Jojo, I said it was just like, I watched Powerpuff Girls and stuff, blah, blah, blah. The Blue Jay doesn't really have that much sentimental stuff. The Blue Jay, um, I just, once I had a Blue Jay Beanie Baby and I thought oranges would be a good contrast to the blue. And that's pretty much like the depth of that tattoo. And then the flaming skull, you know, I've always been like rock and roll, not really. Uh, I mean, like when I was younger, like I had a bicycle. It was actually stolen when I was younger, but I had flames. I had a black bike with flames. I've always really kind of liked flames, thought they were cool. And I also just think um, as maybe more of a tattoo collector type of person, which is what I want to be. I want to have a lot of tattoos. Uh, I thought a skull is a good staple and flames, especially realistic flames, are really cool. And I think they turn out really awesome. So I just wanted the skull and the flames and I was like, this is a cool, it's a cool design. It looks cool. So that's why I got this one. Uh, and I think last but not least, my most recent tattoo I just got, I think I got it done in June, is my smiley face tattoo. Uh, I did have to get it touched up just because my artist was using uh, a newer machine. This is the same artist that did um, the Blue Jay. Oh, I'm so scattered. Um, and the skull was done by the same artist who did Zeus and the daffodils and the roses. Okay, got it all covered. I'm the worst. But so the smiley face was done by the same artist who did the Blue Jay, but she had a new tattoo machine. So she just wanted to not overwork the skin on accident. So um, I did have to go in for a touch up just to make sure the yellow was fully saturated. But other than that, this was just done in one session. It was only like a couple hours. It didn't take long at all. And I really love it. I just wanted a smiley face, bright yellow uh, on the side of my knee. And that's exactly what I got. And um, there's not much to this one except I like smiley faces. They remind me of my mom. They remind me of my childhood. And it can remind me to be happy. And that's pretty much all eight of my tattoos. Now I wanted to film this now because I've been wanting to film my tattoo tour. But now I'm getting another tattoo in September at the tattoo convention. I, w I just want to film it now. I'm getting a collab tattoo at the convention so it's going to be super rad. Subscribe for more, for more content about tattoos, all that jazz. Comment down below what was your most favorite of my tattoos? Um, do you like my tattoos? Do you think they all suck? <laughs> Just let me know down below. You can be critical. I won't cry. Maybe I will. It depends on how critical you are. Try to make me cry. Okay, don't. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's it. I just, I feel nervous like I didn't get everything. For a second, I thought I forgot about the smiley face tattoo because I just got it. But what, and I see that. It's one of the ones I see most often. Like the ones I forget about are the blue jay and the skull one. So it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, comment down below. I really want to know your thoughts. Let me know what types of videos you want to see next. What types of tattoos days you want to see next. I would really appreciate some input, especially when it comes to tattoos. Uh, I'm super excited to get more into tattoo content. And hopefully um, I can build more of a subscriber base with piercings and tattoos. And you guys can just all like and watch whatever you want from me. Just like my personality and follow me for that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you. See you in the next one. Bye! Don't, you can comment about my makeup if you want, but I just felt like it. That's, that's the answer. I felt like it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Okay, I already said bye, so I can be done.